To talk a bit more about planning for retirement and mapping your future, we have as our guests Maureen Kelly and Tom Sherrill. Maureen is the business and community liaison for the Atlanta Regional Commission. Tom is a certified financial planner and he is president of Sherrill and Hutchins Financial Advisory. He serves on the Georgia Council on Aging. And thank you both for being here on Shape of Things to Come. I appreciate your time. And Maureen, I'd like to start with you. I'd like you to explain, if you can, mapping your future and why did the ARC decide to embark on this program? Sure. The Atlanta Regional Commission is the Area Agency on Aging for the 10 County Metro Area. And I don't think a lot of people know that. I area. think that's an important fact and I'm glad you brought that up. Th I think that's right and, and as such we are responsible for planning for programs and services for older adults across the region. And we would be very interested in that regard in promoting independence across the lifespan and helping people become better prepared for retirement. Uh, Governor Purdue actually introduced a new program under Georgia Care is called Lifelong Planning, which encourages people to be better prepared for their own retirement and long-term care. At the same time, ARC was working with the Council for Jewish Elderly in Chicago to bring their concept to Atlanta because it not only focuses on financial planning, but also introduces such topics as housing and health, work and leisure activities, and volunteerism, uh, volunteerism relationships, and the different things that will go into a more comprehensive approach to retirement planning. So at what point should people begin looking at mapping your future and actually using it as a guide? What age? Well, we believe that <laughs> retirement planning begins the first day of work, and so we don't think it, it could be too early. So Think now. Think yeah, early. Right. What is the average retirement age at this point? We used to think of it as 65, but it seems to be creeping up. Yeah, 65, I think, is, is the uh, typical age that we've all heard about. But what seems to be happening now is there is a creeping upward, uh, either for financial reasons, people need to keep working, or uh, very often for personal preferences. Uh, people are just not quite ready to still suddenly hungry, stop. Still hungry, still want right. to continue right. to challenge themselves. Exactly, yeah. How do you think a, a rule of thumb plugs into this? Or is there a rule of thumb for retirement? It, it, the rule of thumb that I would say is to start early. I, I endorse what Maureen. What's early? I think that, uh, that when people get into the workforce, they need to start developing the habit of saving. Do uh, you think that message is getting through? I see that it is. I, I've been in, in the financial industry for 30 years, and I'm finding more and more younger people are aware that they're going to be needing to save and that uh, the old uh, pension plans that we saw are diminishing in numbers and, and there have been some financial problems with those and that people see they're going to have to really start saving early and taking advantage of all of the ways that you can save. Do you yeah. think parents perhaps are doing a better job of sitting down at the kitchen table and reminding their kids, hey, you need to start now? I don't know if it's parents. I'd be interested in Maureen's take on that, but I think uh, that possibly is happening, but also just from what people see and in, in, hear in the in the media. I think that is getting through the idea of needing to 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 put something aside and to save early. I think in addition to them hearing more about it, that the younger adults are seeing their parents, perhaps boomers, taking care of their parents at this time of their lives and seeing those, those stressors on a family, and it brings that home for them to begin thinking about hey, I better be prepared for my own retirement or I may need someone else's assistance. As we go longer and longer in the workforce and, and we view retirement a little differently, what opportunities exist that maybe didn't exist before? Well, for one thing, in Georgia, you can go to school in your mid-60s <laughs> if the class is open for free. And many people are taking advantage of going back to school. They're living longer. They're pursuing two and three different careers. Things that they wanted to do when they were younger. Things that they may have didn't. wanted to do or had a hobby and thought, you know, I could do something more with this later, maybe make it a small business. And when you think about those volunteer opportunities that you touched on earlier, I've, I've witnessed seniors going back and actually heading up organizations or volunteering much of their time because they have such an expertise. Perhaps it's in accounting, perhaps it's in fundraising, or they can contribute on a very big level for a very worthwhile organization. I use Jack McConnell as an example. He was a pediatrician and a top executive for uh, Johnson & Johnson. He retired to Hilton Head, started golf every day, and thought there really must be something more. He went on to organize volunteers in medicine, a group of physicians who opened a free clinic. He did the fundraising and built the building to house this free clinic for the people in Hilton Head. Besides um, the financial planning, 
Uh, what other things should people be considering or evaluating as they plan retirement? Uh, in addition to the financial, people need to be thinking about housing issues, not only where they want to live, do they want, do they want to be close to other family or not, but also the structure of the housing. Uh, they need to be thinking about what they're going to be doing with their time. Uh, because if you are able to retire, uh, do, you, do you want to pay, play golf every day? Some people will be happy with that, but some people may want to have some variety, some travel. How should people go about getting a copy of Mapping Your Future? Sure, I'd love them to visit the website, www.atlantaregional.com. I assume it's very user-friendly. It's quite yeah. user-friendly. People can also call our offices if they have questions about any of these issues, or if they'd like a hard copy, and that number is 404 463 Three, 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 three. Quickly before we go, Tom, mm -hmm. do you think that the retirement market is prepared for the baby boomer? I think it's going to be a challenge. Um, I think that the, <clears throat> the numbers of, of, uh, of baby boomers will be ch very challenging to the pension system, to Social Security, to Medicare. And um, I think that, uh, that baby boomers, and I'm one of them, really need to take advantage of those, uh, of those opportunities for putting money aside on a very uh, tax advantaged way. To be as self-sufficient, as independent as That's possible. Right. That's right. right. Any parting words of advice? Plan early. <laughs> Call us if you need information. <laughs> plan early, plan often, put the money away. Make sure you make good choices in your housing. Decide what you really need. Plan comprehensively. Don't okay. just look at your financial package. Look at some Mental of these health, other issues. Mental health, physical health, emotional health. All right. I endorse all of that. <laughs> all right. <laughs> With that, I thank you. Say thank you to both of you, Maureen Kelly and Tom Sherrill. I appreciate your time here on Shape of Things to Come.